He was the Messiah to the Israelites. No, no, no. Al Masih is a title. Quran says he was sent Al Masih to Bani Israel, very specifically. Warasulan ila Bani Israel, and the messenger to the children of Israel. Okay, he is not my Messiah. Okay, let's not call him Messiah then. Is he coming back to deliver Muslims ah, from something? So, wait, wait, slow down. So now we establish, first of all, Christianity in the current conception has got it wrong. Christ did not come for whole of humanity. He only came to a specific group of Jewish people who were lost. Not the good ones who were still guided, but the lost ones. That's huh? one point one. Uh, no, point one. I'd like, to make an exception. I'd like to make an exception to that because uh, the scriptures actually say in Acts, um, in Acts verse chapter, let me see, where is it? Okay, um, put it on here. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, the scriptures actually say in Acts, Acts 13, verse 1, Now there were in the church of Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simon, a Simeon, who is called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, a lifelong friend of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul, or Paul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul, or the Apostle Paul, for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. And then if you look further down that chapter... Uh, Paul goes to the Jews, but the Jews reject him. And he says to them, um, he says, uh, let's see, where is it? He says, he sa it says, uh, Acts 13, 46, And Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly, saying, It was necessary that the word of God be spoken first to you, Jews. Since you thrust it aside and judge yourselves unworthy of eternal life, behold, we are turning to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us, saying, I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they began rejoicing and glorifying the word of the Lord. And as many as were appointed to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was spreading throughout the whole region. So this is the so, difference. Now in the tell me exactly what you've read in terms of how it supports you. Then I will tell you why it doesn't. Okay, but could you please still answer, how is Jesus going to deliver you as a not Messiah? Me. Oh, is he not? No. Is he not coming back? No, he's not coming back to deliver me. Oh, what's he coming you, back? According okay. to Islam, Jesus yes. is coming back because every human being is mortal. Everyone has to taste death. Yes. Yeah? Every soul shall taste death. What happened is, many prophets... Unless you believe in him. Right. Many prophets and messengers, they underwent what we called migration from the oppression of the people during their time. Noah, upon him be peace, Prophet Nuh salam, he was even building a ship on dry land. Why? Because people were going to oppress him and so on. Eventually, he had to migrate from them. Moses had to migrate from one place to the other. The Pharaoh's army was chasing, and of course, when the sea was split apart, they were drowned. These are major migrations. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had to migrate from Mecca to Medina because the life on him and his disciples and so forth was in danger. The threat of annihilation from existence. That was the problem. So major prophets go undergo migration. Christ migrated from this world to the second heaven because they were trying to totally annihilate him from existence by crucifying him, by killing him. But God saved him. God did not allow to die like an ordinary thief because crucified people are who? The ones that are thieves and rebels. Okay? God doesn't humiliate his prophet and messenger. He saves them. So God saved Christ, second heaven, and he will come back and his mission will be what? Before the end of the world is going to be established, he'll come down as a sign of the end of the world. There's two readings for this, right? There will be a sign for the end of the world. So what happens is, when he comes, there will be no Christian saying, I'm a Christian anymore. He will dismantle Christianity, yeah? figuratively, metaphorically, totally, because everyone has to now believe in what he has to say. And he will come as a, what we call an Ummah of Prophet Muhammad Islam, as a follower of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even though he was a prophet, because he's not going to bring any new revelation. So he will be here, he will live, for about a few years, 40 years or something like this, right? And he will die. But he will also, one of his mission is, he will kill the Antichrist. The Dajjal, who is there so rampant at that time in this society, making people to worship him, worship the false Christ, Antichrist. He will kill the Antichrist. And of course, after that, 
the major science will come and the world's going to come to an end. So Muslims are not going to somehow feel they've been delivered. No, he will be a Muslim and he will bring people to Islam and he will account for those who really worship him and say, I don't know you. you know, who are you? I came to tell you to worship God and you worship me when I was absent. What an unjust thing you have done. Can I ask you a question that your friend couldn't answer? He was very nice, but he couldn't answer it. So, Jesus, going back to Jesus, does he have a human father? Jesus, like Adam, does not have a human father. And the Quran explains the similarity. It says, okay. The very similitude, the parable, the example of Christ is like that of Adam. Adam was created from dust and God said to Adam, be, and he was. So when, when God wanted to create Christ in the womb of Mary, yes. be, and he was. So what God has shown does He's that created, make him God's son? I will explain to you. Okay. What God has shown, yeah. his creative power and his majesty, so people will have no excuses not to understand the God being all powerful. How many ways can we bring human beings? You can bring a human being or create a human being or make a human being from no father and no mother. Without any father, any male and a female. He did that with Adam. No father, no mother. He can bring a human being from a woman alone. That is Christ. He can bring from a male alone. That is Eve. And he can bring from both man, male and female. That's us. That's all for computation. And God has demonstrated his power that he can create human beings in every form of computation. That doesn't make Adam son of God, like the Bible says. The Bible says he's a son of God. Yes, and no Christian worships him either. Eve, yeah. I would rather say Eve is more worthy of being worshipped, according to the Christian mindset, than Christ. Why? Women are the ones who are receptacle in their wombs to produce babies. They have the wombs. Men don't have wombs, do we? We don't. Okay. We don't. Yeah, but one you second. have the seed. One, one second, okay, one second. Anyway. it's interesting. Yeah. So the wounds are where babies can be developed and so on and so forth. Okay? So think about it. Creating a human from the ribs of a man or the wounds of a woman. Which is more miraculous? Both. Why would he you you sound like a Catholic. Which is, which is more miraculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. More miraculous is producing, creating a human being from the ribs. Why was because Eve driven out of the garden? One second, one second. Did she not sin? And did this Jesus point. sin? We no, Jesus no, no. never sinned, but we the woman to, sinned. We will come to an example. So but let's deal with this, Jesus right? Jesus is more worthy of worship than Eve. Amen. We'll, we'll come back after that, but I want to finish this point. So it is more miraculous to make human beings from the ribs of a man or a male rather than the womb of a woman. Logic, rationality, reason all comes to play and tells you, yes, it's not designed to make babies, women are. So if Christians were to worship between Eve and Christ, they should worship Eve. Now, but because we don't worship Eve, that means it's not about the miraculous birth that makes one worthy of being called God or whatever, it's something else. So now let's come back to Christ himself. Do you agree with me? The only being who is worthy of worship is the one who is self-sufficient. It's all creator God. Self-sufficient. Yeah. No. By worship you mean worship like God? Because ascribing... I don't more... worship anyone else other than God. Well, Are you I... saying people can worship God and someone well, else? If I was to approach a king of a country, I would kneel down and honor. worship. What is it? What that's is that? a sign of respect. Respect. That's ascribing worth. That's what worship no, no, means. No, it's not worship. But the word worship Ask means ascribe Muslim, worth. Do you, would you ever intend to bow down to a king in a sign of worship? No. no. Never. No. That's in... Never. In, in fact, if, my friend, yeah. in fact, in fact, if a king instituted something like this, you have, when you come to my court, you bow down, Muslims will go like this. You'll yes. never bow their head. Ask any Muslim here. Never. Even if it's to their detriment. What you were saying about being self-sufficient. 
you know, the person who's worthy of worship is the one who is God sufficient. And that was Jesus because he, he followed the Father in everything. He never did his own will. He only did the Father's will. And that's the reason why he's worthy of worship. And he never I'll sinned. Why, he never sinned. I'll tell you why this is totally, totally unacceptable in our opinion. The one who is worthy of worship has to be one who's perfect, free from all weaknesses and deficiencies. That means Jesus, a Jesus. being. A, that's what you think, right? That means a being who is absolute, independent, and self-sufficient. Anyone else who is not God will have the weaknesses and deficiencies. Jesus Christ, he is deficient. He is not absolute. I'll tell you. Okay. Let's, let's settle this matter once for all. Can Jesus exist without the Father being in existence? No. Is he dependent on the Father for his existence? Completely. Then dependency is a weakness. No, it's not. It's actually a sign of servitude and love servitude and devotion. Oh, wow. Well, in your well, opinion. Don't, it's how he's defining it. Okay. Dependency is weakness. Okay. Do you, do you not, do you not okay. serve your Ummah? Do you serve each I other? Okay. I'm yes. not worthy of worship because I serve the Ummah. No. <laughs> well, okay. let, me, let, me, let me explain okay. to you something. Let me okay. explain to you go something. On, go on. Let me explain something. I need air, oxygen and water, otherwise I will die. I am deficient. I am not self-sufficient. I am dependent. Such a being, am I worthy of worship? No, because you're a sinner. No, no not because of sin. The sin doesn't come in. That's why you're not worthy sin, of worship. Sin doesn't come in. I am not self-sufficient. Yes. The only being, think about it, the only okay. being that can be worthy of worship okay. is one who is self-sufficient. Okay. Jesus was dependent. The, not it doesn't have anything to do with the physical needs. It has to do with obedience. Does the, father, with, does the Father need anyone or anything? It has to do with obedience. It okay. has to do with let's, following the Father. Let's, let's, let's deal with that. Do you, do does you the think... Father, does the wait, Father wait, need wait. anything or anyone? Does the Father need anything? No, no, he doesn't need anything. But do you... Wait, 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 sorry. Okay, I will take your question. Yes, yes. <laughs> Is the father dependent on anyone or anything? Nothing, no one, no one. So, so he has no weaknesses and limitations? No, no, of course and not. And deficiencies? Yes. That will make him perfect? Yes. But anyone who has weakness and limitations yes. will not make him perfect? But imagine, imagine, if you were 100% obedient to Allah, would you be rewarded? But I will never be worthy of worship. I will be rewarded if God wants me to reward okay. following his but law. But if you but, were. But, but, I would never be worthy of worship because the moment you humble to someone else, what it means is you are subservient to someone else. What it means is you know someone is greater than you. What it means is you know someone has more authority, more power than you. That means you are the weaker one. So how can the weaker one be worthy of worship? It doesn't mean weak. It just it, it means, means you weak. have a. It doesn't mean weak. It means you have a different rank. Nope. It means you are worthy of honor at the rank that God has given you. You can never equal God and His creation. We don't. Creation, we don't. Jesus was a creation of God. Right. Right. You're right. Yeah. You can't. Creation equal God. can never be worthy of worship. Thank God you. God has given Jesus honor because He was obedient unto death. That's why he's worthy of worship, because God has honored him. Then perhaps Amen. you have to think, rethink about what we mean by worship. Yes. Are you going to worship a potato? <laughs> oh, no. No. <laughs> no, no. Potatoes are good for salads, fish and chips. I can name, start naming the English. With English, without... Without potato, I come on. They just don't eat English. Well, it's actually curry for us. We prefer yeah, no, curry. We've, okay. we've come and yeah, taken yeah, yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, we, we look forward to when Jesus comes and he is your saviour. Thank you so much. You're shukran. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, shukran. Masalama, masalama. Israelites will return to take down Islam.